The car I've chosen is, I think, the best car Jaguar ever made. The V8 supercharged XJR. It's cool without being cool Britannia. It's caddish without being laddish. It's violent without being vicious. And it is just the last word in sophistication. Hannibal Lecter had one, and I think that says it all, because the last we saw of him, he was on a plane, scot-free, eating a district attorney's head. Soon, I reached the meeting point where I found James, who'd bought an XK8 convertible. Here we are, look. A big cat near an old dog. Greetings, mate. Moron. It's not a Subaru. You're supposed to be up holding the reputation of the Jag driver. Well, why have you bought that? Because it's excellent. It isn't. It is. No, this was a very poor Jaguar. No, this was a very good Jaguar. It wasn't. You could go camping in the wheel arches of it. Look, it was so high up. They looked all right when they were supercharged and lower, but this No, is... but they didn't work properly when they were supercharged it... and lower because they had a terrible ride. The one thing you get from a Jag is a nice ride. You're disconnected from the yes. world. That's the point. Anyway. And those wheels, what's the matter? Don't, there's no any way about it. That's the best Jag probably ever made. Mm. Well, it is. No. Tell me what's wrong with that. One of the wheels is odd. Yes, ah, right, I know exactly what's happened here. Uh-huh. Previous owners had a puncture. He simply borrowed a wheel from another car to use. And he's going to give it back? Of course he is. Yeah. Okay. Because he drives a jack. Exactly. And look in here. It looks as if there's been a knife fight in the car. That's because he went to stay with some friends, obviously, thought, I'll borrow their cutlery, mm. tucked it into his trousers, and then he's cut his seat. I That's see. what's happened. At this point, Mr Hammond hoved into view. God, is that a Mark 10? That is a Mark 10. Oh. That's a, that's a that, properly villainous jag. That is a proper jag. Jag, oh, yes. Whatever you do, OK, do not tell him that. No, no. Hammond, you idiot. What? Well, we're supposed to be upholding the reputation of Jaguar. You've, you've brought an antique, you've brought an old piece of furniture. I am celebrating and revelling in the glories of Jaguar. This is 1967 420G. This is, a, this is, look at the, this front end started with this car. That's the Jaguar look, isn't it? The four headlamps, no, the but narrow grille. Seriously, what is that? It's a 420G. This was the. No, no, not that. That. This was my jacket. I thought, you know, a bit of style, we're in Jaguars. There's no style in your jacket at all. This is riddled with style, mate. That is your, a... Some of your jackets are terrible, but I can't... Anyway, get... this was favoured by every villainous bank robber and baddie in and around England in the 60s. And how much did you pay for it? Six and a half thousand pounds. What? I know. That is a lot of car for six and a half grand. Look at the size of it. Hammond, that is one thousand... No, wait, two thousand five hundred pounds more than I paid for a supercharged Jaguar. That is Jaguar's embarrassing attempt to recapture their own design that started with this, the four headlamps, the narrow grille. This is definitive. Your car is derivative. And Hammond wasn't finished there. Look at the size of this. Imagine how many oil paintings borrowed I could get in there. It smells terrible. Toolkit. Let me have a look. That's for opening windows. That is no. <laughs> this is, this the, is the... not necessarily for fixing the car. <laughs> None of the, That's for cutting through somebody's <laughs> fence. <laughs> this is for undoing the paintings from the walls. <laughs> or the Jaguar toolkit is just for burglary. It's got Jemmy in it. 